Well, the simulation hypothesis, which is that we are currently living in a computer simulation, should be understood literally. It's not just in a metaphorical sense, whereby one could view the universe as a simulation, but literally we would be living in a simulation created by some advanced civilization in a computer that they have built in their universe. And everything we see and our brains themselves would just be parts of this simulation. And if we are simulations, might we have been simulated for a purpose? Might our existence not be down to chance? Might there after all be a creator with a grand design, just as our ancestors believed? The simulation argument is based on empirical considerations about the levels of computing power that would be available to an advanced civilization. Of course, it couldn't even be conceptualized before we had the concept of a computer. Um, so it's really only in the last several decades that the hypothesis could even be entertained. The creatures crawling across the board in the game of life are little more than blips of data. Nevertheless, they lend eerie support to the simulation hypothesis. The rules of my life game are tiny, trivial things. Uh, and the rules, you know, of the real universe are so hard that we've been trying to understand them for thousands of years and, you know, haven't finished yet by any means. Um, so one can't really uh, expect too much, but already these tiny, trivial laws exhibit interesting behaviour. <laughs> It proved an important point, which is that a system like this could have some of the properties of the real universe. So, in a way, its design was copied, but in a very trivial way, from uh, real-life biology. And uh, so it's rather nice that, you know, correspondingly, it, uh, it became a kind of artificial biology. We can't be certain to what extent the actual laws governing the natural world are similar to those in the game of life. We do know that the laws governing the natural world are simple. We can write them down in simple equations. We can program computers to simulate them. And from great simplicity, we derive immense complexity. And if our existence is inside a simulation, are we real at all? Speculations about the nature of reality and whether it might be an illusion or a dream goes back for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, philosophers have been pondering these questions. If we are in a simulation, does that mean that nothing is real? I think a better way of viewing it is that it would mean that reality is something slightly different than we thought. Um, for most practical intents and purposes, you would still behave as you would do anyway. We have no reason to get depressed by um, sort of philosophical implications of these things, because you know, the everyday aspect of life, we're always going to feel the same, regardless of whether we actually have free will or not, regardless of whether the universe is going to end in a big rip or a big crunch, you know. And um, I think for all the thinking we humans like to do about the big things, what really, really gets to us emotionally are the everyday little things. And um, they are what they are. If we are a simulation, then in the ways that matter to us, we are real enough. Whatever force has guided our creation, mathematical or intelligent, it has constructed from simple atoms a creature capable of thinking beyond the limits of physical investigation. 
these kinds of arguments show at the same time the limitations to the reach of the human intellect uh, in that we are discovering how our little corner of the world might indeed just be a small, 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 small corner of a vastly bigger world than we never imagined. Um, and that we might never, even in principle, be able to reach out and look at the other parts. And at the same time, these arguments also emphasize the astounding reach of the human intellect in that we can begin to formulate theories and hypotheses that extend way beyond the world around us that we were evolved to cope with. How many lions entered the cave? Uh, will it rain later this afternoon? What does that person think of me? These kind of very down-to-earth issues that our brain evolved, but it turns out that they can be used to, to begin to grapple with these fundamental questions of existence and the nature of the world. In searching for an alternative explanation to the religious accounts of our creation, cosmologists have uncovered a possibility that seems incredibly similar. An all-powerful, all-knowing, super-intelligent being. An entity whose motives are unfathomable and whose existence is unprovable. It's very important for us physicists to not dismiss ideas just because they're weird. Because if we did, we would have already dismissed atoms, black holes, and all sorts of other marvelous things. And actually, you know, when you ask a basic question about the nature of reality, you know, don't you expect an answer which is a bit weird? I think anything but weird would be, would be a big letdown. And so frankly, I think, you know, let's just accept that the universe is weird and, and, and um, view that as, as part of its charm. There's no particular reason why our human brain should have evolved just far enough to be able to assimilate the deepest levels of reality. What is amazing is that we've been able to make so much sense as we have of the external world. I believe when the history of science is written, then what's been discovered about our universe in the last decade or two will be one of the most exciting chapters. But the key question, of course, is what we still don't know. And that is the challenge for the coming century.